Hello friends, welcome back on our channel. Today we will discuss about law of reflection by Fermat's principle. Before moving towards law of reflection, first of all, what is Fermat's principle? According to Fermat's principle of extremum path, a ray of light in passing from one point to another through a set of media by any number of reflections or refractions selects a path for which the time taken is either minimum or maximum. Here M M dash is our reflecting surface. A ray incident on this reflecting surface and this incident ray is represented by AO. This ray is reflected by the surface and follow the path OB. So AO is our incident ray and OB is our reflected ray. Now we draw perpendiculars on M M dash from point A and B respectively and these perpendiculars are AM and BM dash. AM is equal to A and let BM dash is equal to a small b. This is our normal. I is our angle of incidence. Angle of incidence is that angle which made by incident ray with the normal. And similarly, R is the angle of reflection. Angle of reflection is that angle which made by the reflected ray with the normal. Let M O is equal to X and M M dash is equal to C. So O M dash will be C minus X. Now since whole path is traveled by light in air, so there will be no use of refractive index since the refractive index of air is 1. Now the optical path between A and B, optical path will be A O plus O B. So L is equal to A O plus O B. Now to find the value of A O, we use right angle triangle A M O. So in triangle A M O, A O is the hypotenuse and A M is our base and M O is perpendicular. So A O is equal to root of A square plus X square. Similarly, OB can be determined by using this triangle. So OB is equal to root of B square plus C minus X whole square. We substitute the values of AO and OB here. So L is equal to root of A square plus X square plus root of B square plus C minus X whole square. Now, from Fermat's principle, the position of O is such that the optical path L should be maximum or minimum. And for maximum or minimum, first differential should be zero. So dL by dx is equal to zero. Now, this is our L. Now we differentiate this equation with respect to x. So, differential of root a square plus x square will be 1 upon 2 root a square plus x square plus differential of root of b square plus c minus x whole square is 1 upon 2 root b square plus c minus x whole square and the differential of b square plus c minus x whole square will be 2 into c minus x into minus 1 and dl by dx is 0 so this will be equal to 0. Now this 2 and 2 will be cancelled out and similarly this 2 and 2 will be cancelled out. So x divided by root of a square plus x square plus c minus x into minus 1 upon root of b square plus c minus x whole square or x upon root of a square plus x square is equal to c minus x upon root of b square plus c minus x whole square. Now this is our diagram and from geometry this angle will be equal to this angle. 
so this will be i and similarly this angle will be r now in a triangle m a o sin i is equal to perpendicular upon hypotenuse means m o upon a o or sin i is equal to x upon root of a square plus x square similarly in this triangle sin r is equal to c minus x upon root of b square plus c minus x whole square we substitute the value of x upon root of a square plus x square and the value of c minus x upon root of b square plus c minus x whole square from here to here so this will be sin i is equal to sin r or i is equal to r it means the angle of incidence should be equal to the angle of reflection so for reflection from any surface the angle of incidence should be equal to the angle of reflection and also the incident ray reflected ray and normal to the reflecting surface all should lie in the same plane and that plane is our plane of incidence these are to the law of reflections and hence by using fermat's principle we can easily prove the law of reflections here we end our session so thank you and goodbye